Hi and welcome back to Functional Scala. Today we'll discuss about repeated parameters or variable arguments. Up until now we have seen that all the functions have fixed number of argument and how can we manipulate these arguments? We can use partially applied functions or currying to reduce the number of arguments that we pass to our functions. However, like many other programming languages, Scala also supports variable arguments or repeated parameters. Let us see it in detail. So the first question is what are repeated parameters or variable arguments? It is a shorthand to provide arbitrary number of parameters to a method. We use variable arguments whenever we are not sure about how many arguments we need to provide to a method or if we want to calculate arguments dynamically. However, there are few conditions to use these repeated parameters. First is that all the repeated parameters must be of the same type. Second is that we can only have one argument as a repeated parameter in method definition. We cannot declare two repeated parameter for a method. And finally, Scala only allows the last parameter of the method call to be repeated. So to denote the repeated parameter, place an asterisk after the type of parameter. Let us see repeated parameters in action. I will declare a method show parameters that would print all the incoming parameters to our method. The method would take input as repeated parameters of string and will print them all. Let me first try to pass two arguments to our show parameters method. And you can observe that it has printed all the parameters. Now let us try with four parameters. And it goes through fine this time as well. Scala indeed supports repeated parameters. And what if we do not provide any parameter? And our method wouldn't do anything. So let us understand what goes under the hood. All the repeated parameters that we pass to our method are treated as the type of an array of declared type of the parameter. Thus, the type of arguments inside the show parameter function, which is declared as type string star, is actually array of strings. Now the next question is, can we make use of this information? Yes, we can. We can utilize all the helper functions of an array such as for each or length. Let us have a look at another example. This time, I'm going to declare a method grade calculator for a university. The method will take in number of scores obtained by a student in various subjects. And based on this score, university will assign a grade either A, B or C. First, we'll calculate the average of all the scores. In order to calculate the average, I will add up all the scores and will divide it by the number of subjects. Notice how instead of calculating the sum and length, I'm using utility function of array. And then I will pattern match this average score to calculate the grade. If the average score is greater than 70, then the grade is A. If it is less than 30, then the grade is C. Otherwise, anything between 30 or 70 would be grade B. Let us pass few parameters to test our method. 
and we have get the grade as B. Does this mean that Scala will allow even an array to grade calculator method? The answer is yes and no. Let us have a look. I'll declare this new array random scores with values 40, 80 and 50. And now if I try to pass this array to our method grade calculator, then we'll observe that Scala is not very happy about it. It has given us type mismatch error. To pass an array, we need to append the array argument with a colon followed by an underscore asterisk symbol. Let us try it again. And indeed, it was successful this time. This notation of colon and underscore asterisk will ask the compiler to pass each element of array as single argument. So our random scores are passed one by one to grid calculator rather than all of it as a single array argument. Yet again, Scala has helped us to write an elegant code with minimal lines of code. Today, we saw a couple of examples on how can we pass repeated parameters to a method and rules around it. Hope you are enjoying playing around with this wonderful language and will continue to explore more of it. See you next time. Thanks for watching. Please post your comments and suggestions.